Ever since the advent of photography in the 1800s, people have relied very heavily on the adage the camera never lies to back up all sorts of claims. Photographic pioneers experimented with all sorts of techniques to make the impossible seem real, many earning a crust peddling personalised ghost photos. I'll be exploring this side of things in a later video, but this video, I'm going to be examining four of the most famous ghost photos ever taken that continue to stump the experts. The stories behind ghost photos don't get much more classic than that of the photograph of Lord Cumbermere's study. Colonel Wellington Henry Stapleton Cotton, 2nd Viscount Cumbermere, was a British soldier and conservative politician who lived from the 24th of November 1818 to the 1st of December 1891. He served in the 7th Hussars, stationed in Canada, where he was involved with the Papineau Rebellion. In 1847, he entered politics, finally rising to the House of Lords in 1865. As a Viscount Cumbermere, Stapleton Cotton's residency was in Cumbermere Abbey in Cheshire. Lord Cumbermere was run over by a horse and carriage in late 1891, dying seven weeks later of coronary thrombosis, clots in the blood vessels of the heart. As was the custom, he was buried at St. Margaret's Church in Renbury, roughly four miles from the Abbey. At the time of the funeral, a photographer set up her camera for a long exposure in Lord Cumbermere's study, as the house was empty owing to everyone, including all the servants, attending the funeral. The camera was left exposed for around an hour. At that time, it is believed nobody was in the study. The resulting image shows a faint shape of a man sitting in an ornate chair near the foreground of the image. Most who viewed the image stated that it appeared to be Lord Cumbermere himself, perhaps having one last rest in his favourite seat. Double exposure was deemed not to be an applicable explanation, though some speculate that the image seems to indicate that someone may have sat down and then exited the frame during the hour of the exposure, even though this is contrary to all reports from the household at the time. Curiously, his father, the first Viscount, was Governor of Barbados during the incident of the moving coffins in the chase vault. Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky has been featured in many programs about ghosts and is widely regarded as one of the most haunted locations on Earth. Waverly Hills began as a hospital for tuberculosis patients in 1910, housing around 50 patients at the time. Over the course of its life, it was expanded to house up to 500 patients before closing in 1961. However, in 1962, it was reopened under the name Woodhaven Geriatric Center, becoming a nursing home for geriatrics and the mentally handicapped before closing in 1982. The most famous ghost photo from Waverly Hills was taken in one of the many eerie corridors. It allegedly depicts the spirit of a nurse named Mary Lee who committed suicide in room 502 and has since been spotted in various places around the grounds. The story goes that Tom Holstead took the photograph in 2006 when he was investigating with Missouri Paranormal Research. The image was captured on the fourth floor of the main building around 7 in the morning on a Pentax K1000 35mm film camera with a ProMaster 5600 extendable flash. There has been much conjecture about who the ethereal figure in the image is, though it is referred to as Mary Lee because of its resemblance to a photograph found on the grounds with the name Mary Lee written on the back. Mary Lee, it is thought, was either the nurse that hanged herself in room 502 after discovering she was pregnant, or a woman that would frequently visit the TB patients before contracting the disease herself and dying in the hospital. Over the years, there's been a whole bunch of investigations on the site, including a memorable visit by the Ghost Adventures crew, led by the ever-entertaining Zach Bagans. The hospital is still standing, despite plans to turn it into a hotel and function centre. Bachelors Grove Cemetery is an abandoned graveyard on the outskirts of Chicago's southwest suburbs in Midlothian, Illinois. The area was first settled around 1833, with the first burials reportedly taking place in around 1840. There are many spirits associated with Bachelors Grove, but for this entry we will focus on the most famous recorded one. This photo ran in the Chicago Sun-Times and was taken by Ghost Research Society in August 1991. After having made many EMS sweeps in the cemetery, the GRS took a series of infrared photographs. This is the only shot showing the fully formed apparition of a dark-haired woman sitting on a gravestone with a checkerboard pattern carved into it. The identity of the spirit is not definitively known, however, a woman in a white dress has been sighted in the cemetery on numerous occasions, gathering the nickname the Madonna of Bachelors Grove due to her luminous and serene appearance. More recently, the Madonna was photographed again, 
this time near the grave of Dora Newman, to whom the spirit is now attributed. Being a massive toy enthusiast, it could be said that I haunt the local Toys R Us, but in this case we're talking about an actual paranormal occurrence from the 1970s. The Sunnydale, California Toys R Us was having some odd goings on, while well, going on. Items were being flung from shelves by invisible hands, stacked in aisles overnight when the store was closed. Employees experienced inexplicable cold spots and disembodied fingers touching them. The women's bathroom in particular was subject to strange phenomena like faucets being mysteriously turned on full blast, and people felt like they were being watched. The haunted toy store quickly gained a reputation, and in 1978 the TV show That's Incredible decided to do a feature on it. This photograph was taken during a seance that was held in one of the aisles that was particularly afflicted. The medium, Sylvia Brown, was attempting to make contact with a young man named Johnny Johnston who had died after he bled to death, after an accident on the farm that had occupied the land before the toy store. Johnston was a Scandinavian immigrant who was maligned by the people of his community, labelled as crazy because of encephalitis and inflammation of the brain. Johnston worked the orchards of the Murphy farm, but one day in 1884 he accidentally cut his leg open with an axe and bled to death. The farm fell into disrepair over the years and was eventually knocked down and replaced in 1971 with the Toys R Us Megastore. It was alleged by Brown that Johnson's spirit was the one haunting the toy store. While the seance was being conducted, photographer Bill Tidwell was using infrared cameras and high-speed film to try and capture anything anomalous. While most of the photographs were developed showing the group in an empty aisle, this image taken with the infrared camera showed something altogether different. In a spot shown to be empty on the high-speed film at the same time, we can see a young man with his hands in his pockets watching the seance. The films were both processed by the same lab at the same time, and no tampering was ever discovered. For those of you interested, the Toys R Us is still there to this day, and it's still haunted. And there you have it, full real ghost photos. For those of you that are interested, I have provided some links to further reading about each photo in the description. I plan to do another video that talks about the technical side of ghost photography very soon. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by pressing like. And don't forget, if you'd like to see more videos like this, press subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.